Hey y'all, so I've been getting a lot of questions on how I prepared for the NAPLEX. So in this video, I'm going to tell you all about it. I used to always worry about what people thought of me and would try so hard to live by society standards. Then I realized that I was created to be different and regardless of what I did, I would never fit in. So I decided to follow my dreams instead. Join me on this journey as I grow in my faith, go through the ups and downs of pharmacy school, and most importantly, being God's masterpiece. So in my last video, I shared how I passed the NAPLEX. Yay! I'm officially a pharmacist and it feels so good. I've been able to rest, these past couple weeks and it has been amazing. You've probably heard of this book. You've probably seen it all over the internet. You've probably heard so many people talk about it and that is the RX Prep book. <laughs> Literally, if you are studying for the NAPLEX, you have to have this book. I know some people say, well, I only use this, I only use this, I only use this. Get the RX Prep book. like. I would not risk getting anything else, okay? So the RX Prep book um, is really good because it has every single thing that you need, like everything. Um, so basically, um, my school had like a package deal. It was like the videos, the test bank, and the book. I, at first, was watching the videos for each chapter, and that was not beneficial because um, I didn't get all the information that I needed and I would like take the practice questions at the end and then do like really bad. I eventually was like okay this is not working and I need to change around my study habits so I decided to um, instead read the book and y'all reading the book is so much better than watching the videos. You might think like, oh, I'm an audio learner, visual learner, like it might be better. Like they don't go into as much detail as the chapter does. So if you wanna still watch the videos, I think it's great, but read the chapter first or read the chapter after. But make sure you still read the book. Um, some people have, you know, when I was doing my research, some people were like, oh, you only need to read this chapter and this chapter and this chapter and that's it. No, you need to read every single chapter in that book. Do not think that you could go into this exam only going over the big chapters is what people told me. Like, yeah, just go over the big chapters. That's all you need. No, because I got a lot of questions on smaller chapters. So I was so happy that I read those chapters. So make sure you read the whole book because you don't know what you're going to get. So make sure you read the whole book at least once. Definitely, definitely, definitely read over the big chapters at least like five times. <laughs> and I'm not joking. Um, big chapters include the infectious disease, the cardiology, the endocrinology, the immunizations, oh my gosh, that was a big one, the compounding, and of course math. Like you need to know math in and out. Like you need to be in your sleep calculating math problems because that's how much math is on the exam. Like I think it's almost like 40% or some, I don't know. It's a lot of math. So make sure you know how to do the math. Um, and RX Prep did a good job of covering the math. As far as the compounding goes, um, this is where RX Prep fell short a little bit. Um, they didn't really go into as, as much detail into the compounding, especially for like the excipients chapter. So the excipients chapter is really important and I definitely would recommend that you like know the excipients um, and make sure like you, know, you understand um, what they're used for. So I wouldn't really utilize the RX Prep book for that. Um, I think there's like a handbook that has like the excipients, like all of them. It's a pretty thick book, but like just make a flashcard bank on Quizlet or something and just have all the excipients. Or maybe you can find one on Quizlet, I don't know. I'll try to link it below if I find something, but uh, definitely study excipients as well. Oh, anticoagulant chapters, like anemia, like all of that, like those are considered big chapters. And I'll try to make a list below um, so you can have that resource for you as well. 
Oh, before I go any further, if you notice, I am rocking my super comfy, super warm masterpiece sweatshirt, y'all. It is fall season, time is cooling down, the weather's chilly, so it's time to layer up, and this is definitely a must in your closet. Like, it is so warm and so comfy and so stylish. So you can check out my website, you can click the link below. I have plenty of other designs, other sweatshirts and t-shirts, so check it out. Another thing that I utilized were flashcards. So I was able to find these clinical flashcards on Amazon, and what this pretty much was was that they had different cases um, that were both multiple choice and short answer, which was really good because it really helped you to be thorough in, in your understanding of that topic. So they would have a case, they would have lab values, they would have all of that, and the question would be like, um, what is the next step for this patient? Like, what should they get? Or like something of the sort. And then on the back, it would have detailed answers. That was really helpful to put into practice, um, putting everything together because with the rx prep book you read that chapter and then you do the questions associated to that topic so a lot of the times you were able to rule out answers because you knew you were doing like the diabetes chapter so you're like okay this is not right this is not right but on the exam like it's not so straightforward you know you have a case with like multiple disease states and you have to try to figure out what the um, appropriate therapy is for the patient so i really like those flashcards because it really helped me to um Put everything together if that makes sense so um, I would try to link it below if I can't find it I forget the name I think it was just like pharmacotherapy flashcards I'm pretty sure that's all it was um, I don't know if it was specific for the Naplex but it really helped me um, to do cases like they were really similar in my opinion to um, how questions were asked on the exam um, and not even just on the exam, but just for like in real life, like you're going to be looking at patient cases. So I think that's something to really just go through to really be quick um, with answering those questions. Because um, like when you practice looking at lab values over and over, when you practice going through cases, like once you see something, you're automatically know, OK, this potassium is off. What's up? Like, you know, so you're able to like pick up on things a lot faster. Um, the next resource that I utilize, and this is kind of like extra, like you don't really need this, but I needed it. Um, and that was hiring a tutor. So I decided to hire a tutor um, three weeks before my exam because um, I just felt like I still wasn't getting the material and it wasn't like, I wasn't retaining it as I as I should have been, um, you know, like taking practice questions and like still not getting the scores that were passing. So I was like, I need some help, and it made sense for me because um, for the compounding exam that I had to take in January, I took two classes for that. For the law exam, I also took a class for that, and then for NAPLEX, it was kind of just like just me you know studying so I was like I need some help and that's okay you just need to do whatever you need to do to pass this exam and to be an adequate pharmacist all right so I hired a tutor through varsity tutors I'll link them below this is not sponsored I'm gonna tell you this is I spent my own money I did my own research and that was it but um, I was paired with a tutor who actually graduated um, this year as well, and they're doing a residency. So the information was still fresh in her mind, and I was like, okay, I think that'll work. So uh, we had like a phone like interview meeting, I don't know, and I kind of discussed with her, like, these are the topics that I want to go over. I have three weeks until my exam, because you, you're able to buy packages of hours. So I bought the 12 hour package. So. I had two two-hour sessions for those three weeks so um she was like okay like we could definitely go over all those topics and we did we went over every single topic i asked to go over and more like we also went over like other things that she knew were important to know um we went over practice questions together like it was super helpful like after every session i was like oh my gosh all coming together like it was so helpful like I can't even explain to you how 
helpful it was. Like, it was two hours long, but like, I was like, wow, like, I learned what we learned in a whole semester <laughs> in two hours. Um, so she was incredible. Like, she was amazing. And I'm so happy that I decided to have the tutor because um, as I was taking the exam, um, how like we we went over certain topics really helped me to recall it um, and to like uh, kind of understand the information in such a way that like if it's presented differently you're still able to process and answer the question which is um, very important because it's not like the information wasn't in my brain it was just a matter of am I utilizing it correctly am I understanding how to approach this question how to understand it and how to properly treat this patient which is important for the NAPLEX but also important for real life so I'm really happy that I took that extra step to get a tutor so that's what I did oh there was another resource that I used so many resources but um they were so helpful and I want to like provide you all with all the information that you need so there was this YouTube channel called farm affinity I believe the name is um, and they do live sessions so basically he's a pharmacist and he does live recordings he'll go over big topics like infectious disease diabetes and he'll have like a zoom meeting where you can log on and you can listen to that lecture it's interactive which is great so like he asks questions and then you answer like it's it's a discussion and that is how I learn best. So I definitely think that's a great resource and it's free. And the lessons that he's done already, he posts them on YouTube. So you can still go back and watch them because that's how I found out. I was watching his diabetes and I was like, whoa, this is really helpful. So I joined like the Facebook group that he had and um, I was able to join his live session on arrhythmias. It was on arrhythmias and it was on Zoom, it was live and it was amazing. So. Um, definitely check it out again none of this is sponsored but I'm just trying to help y'all out like I wish I had these resources before um, I started preparing for the exam so I wouldn't be able to help y'all out what else did I utilize I also utilized the APHA complete book for the NAPLEX do not just use this book alone this is like an aid the only reason why I utilize this book is because they had practice questions at the end of each chapter so that really helped me to just have extra practice questions honestly um I didn't really read it because like the chapters were kind of just like condensed and like and then in the rx prep book it's colorful it's like straightforward and it wasn't as straightforward in my opinion some of you might think differently but like that's just how I felt so yeah I utilize that too if you want just extra questions you can use that but honestly like if you have the question bank from rx prep like you should be good um i know plenty of people who pass just utilizing rx prep but those were just some other supplemental things that i did that really helped me to pass so i would encourage you all like to start studying sooner rather than later um that was something that i really kind of beat myself up about was that i should have started studying like as soon as i finished taking the first board exam in January but you know after January after I passed I was like I'm free and like you know of course I was still doing rotation so I wasn't just like sitting in my bed doing nothing but like I should have been more proactive and uh, utilized my time a little bit better to start studying sooner start as soon as you can um, a recommendation that I think is really good is um, as you're doing ro your rotations if you're doing a cardiology rotation read the cardiology chapter before that rotation and or during if you're doing a diabetes rotation read the diabetes chapter before your rotation or during like and so on and so forth because that can really help you to um be prepared for your rotation and also um, help you to understand and learn a lot more because you'll have somewhat of a foundational understanding of that topic already of course you do have that foundation from school but i don't know about y'all like after you take an exam that information just literally floats out of your brain as you walk out of that exam room so there were a lot of things that i just did not remember like i know i learned it i just didn't remember it like so especially for infectious disease like i forgot you know and i didn't have an infectious disease rotation so 
Definitely also like if you have the ability to choose more clinical rotations, do that because you're able to see more of the big topic um, disease states on your rotation as opposed to like if you do not as many clinical. I didn't have as many clinical rotations because I wanted to move back home and I just did the rotations that were available to me. A lot of them were more so like different types like you know like I did a whole video talking about my rotations but um but I still love them and I enjoyed them and I was able to see other sides of pharmacy so I actually am really grateful for that but as far as like preparation for the NAPLEX more clinical rotations can definitely help you do that as far as timeline to study um some people say two weeks some people say four weeks some people say six weeks for me, I definitely studied four months. I studied a really long time, okay? And yeah, yeah. Um, so the timing is all dependent on you. Do not just depend on what other people are saying. Oh, I could just do it in two weeks. I could just do it in a week. Like that book is thick. <laughs> okay. It's really thick. So don't just go based off of what people are saying. Go based off of you. Take a practice exam and see how you do and go from there. That's the best thing that I can say is to do that. Um, the RX prep test bank also comes with a practice exam that they say that you should only take it if you are like two weeks before your exam or something like that. I would take it before you start studying, see how you do, and then base your, your studying off of that and create the timeline that way. Another thing that I will say is the NABP offers real practice exams that they basically take questions from old exams. Um, and they have two practice exams available. You do have to pay for this. I believe it's $65 or something like that. Um, but take those because I took it and I got this same exact score on my actual NAPLEX exam. So definitely, definitely, definitely um, take that exam because that can really give you um, an idea of like where you'll fall um, on exam day. So. That was super helpful and yeah those are all the tips I have I'll try to share all this information I know that it was like so much but I really want to see you all succeed and I really want to see you all do well so um, that's why I'm making this video and another way to help out is I'm doing a giveaway of the 2021 RX prep book. I know how expensive the last year of pharmacy school is. You're on rotations, so you can't really work as often as you would like. You have to pay for all these exams and pay for all the study guides and everything. Like, So I wanna be able to help out with at least one thing and um, get the RX prep book for one person. I wish I could get it for everyone, but the way my pockets are set up. So check out the link in my bio. I have all the information there on how to sign up for that giveaway. Um, and yeah, all the best. I hope you win. So that's it for this video. I hope that it was super helpful and that you were able to get something out of it. I really want to see you succeed. Ultimately, you know, trust God but put in the work. God is sovereign, but you need something to work with. You gotta put the information in your brain, you know? <laughs> so um, trust God and trust that he has amazing things planned for you. So you all already know the deal. You can comment below or you can email me at behismasterpiece at gmail.com. Go out, be kind, be caring, be loving, and as always, be his masterpiece. Bye y'all.